following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Oh, look who we oh. have. It's a beautiful day. Good oh, man. Jim from Minneapolis. We are taken by storm. Taken it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good, man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday. Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. But yeah. holy commo I mean, it went up to $420 last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We're here five days a week. We go seven and a half hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. You are what you believe you are. Humans are powerful magicians. You have the power to make yourself what you are right now, but it's not your reasoning mind that controls your power. It's what you believe. Muggerize, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 471, NASDAQ up 59, S&P's up 34. That's a gain of 1.6% in the Dow Industrials, 6 tenths of 1% in the NASDAQ, and 1% in the S&P. You have the NDX 100 as well as the NASDAQ Composite, folks. That hit all-time highs this morning at all-time highs yesterday. They broke topside yesterday. Today, uh, it's lagging, but the bottom line, uh, the lagger it was the Dow Industrials, and that thing is picking up steam. That's up 472 right now. If we go inside the Dow Industrials and we take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow Industrials out here, you're going to see United Health is the big mover inside there. Well, you got a lot of them. United Health is putting 102 positive points, Boeing 70, IBM 53, 3M 30, Travelers 27. Taken away from it, Disney minus 19, Merck minus 19, Visa minus 6, and Nike minus 4. No big deal uh, there, no doubt. Um, so bottom line is that what you do see is that you see the Dow Industrials catching up with the other indices. It looks like the Dow does want to, when you get this close to a high, it wants to whack that high. Gold, gold contract. Up six dollars and forty cents, trading at fifteen fifty six. An ounce. We get open. We take a look at that gold market. What we have inside the gold market right now. Gold went down to a low today of fifteen fifty one. You rejected lower price at that level. Bottom line, we tested the lows of yesterday. You're going to come in first off with yesterday. You came into the strength. You did that with lighter volume. Today you got to a lower low with lighter volume without making. The swing low, which is pretty cool, folks. 1542 is the swing point. When you don't make the swing point, you do the test, you reject it. Bottom line, I suspect gold's now going to go once again for the top of this range. The top of this range now is 1595 to 1598. That is the B point of this complex ABC structure on the way up, and we're still in a complex ABC structure. That's the, that's the bottom line. Silver market. Silver is a different animal out here. It has been a different animal for a long period of time. Uh, and we had with the silver market was this. Silver yesterday, you know, gold was getting smacked on the way down. Silver, bottom line, you know, only went down a penny. Today, you got to a lower low. You did reject it. You had lighter uh, volume. That's saying that silver also is going to make its way to higher price. Now, notes and bonds. This is the market. This is going to be pretty intense watching this market shake out. The reason being is that what we had out here is that you're down 10 ticks. We are trading at a price point of 130.18. Uh, you're down with 234,000 contracts. So that's good contract volume. I mean, that's, you know, it's lighter than what we're going into. But that being said, it's just slightly light. I mean, you, you are banging into about 2.6, 2.3. I suspect that's going to be due about 2.4. And when that gets set up like that, more than likely, maybe tomorrow we test the lows of this once again. Um, when you go, that's the 10-year, 
We go take a look at the 30 year. I expect it's going to be the same. They, tr they trade in the same aspects. 371,000 contracts in the 30 year. That's decent contract volume, no doubt, on the way down. And what are we doing? You're going right into the same type of strength. Uh, now, the oh, this is interesting. So the, there is a differential in, in here, and this is what it is. It's pretty substantial, actually. The 30-year is actually going into 487,000 contracts, and you have rejected, um, you know, lower price at this particular point. So uh, there's less sellers there in the 30-year. Um, that's a good heads up. Uh, there's also less sellers in the TLT, which is the 20-year plus ETF. Uh, that baby is uh, doing 7 million going into about 10. The uh, oil, let's go take a look at the oil market. Oil caught a bid out here this morning. When you say caught a bid, uh, bottom line is that it's about time that it caught a bid because guess what? Oil has been a one-way trade, and when I say one-way trade, this is pretty amazing. Uh, we go back to the January 8th, and it was at $65.40. Uh, yesterday, last night, it hit $49.31. Uh, you get a pop out here. You know, hey, listen, it's a start. That's the real bottom line. You get a start, um, you know, we'll see uh, if this baby can, uh, a, a normal, let me see what a dead cat bounce is. So a dead cat bounce, folks, would be a 0.382 retracement of the way down. So a point, <laughs> check this out, a 0.382 retracement is 55.50. So that could get a bounce up there. You know, we'll see whether it could even get that high. I, I don't expect we're going to get that high, but we'll see. If we go to large integrated oils, Exxon Mobil caught a bit out here today. That's been a one-way route and a way down. We just went from 72 down to 60. It's at up to 63 today, trading 60 to 60. We, get, we take a look at Chevron. What do you have with Chevron? Uh, same type of setup. Chevron has just gone from $122 down to $105. That is up $3.17 today, and this volume on Chevron, though, is absolutely anemic in a huge way. Got to go through Tesla. Tesla, this is uh, no doubt, this is a, a wild equity, uh, and what you have with Tesla out here, uh, Tesla is down $146, bucks, trading $740, and we are off the highs of yesterday of $224. And what we are going to have, be having, folks, in the next few days is that you're going to be getting the 13F filings. Now, the 13F filings uh, have to be out within 45 days. Uh, we get a few early ones out here that have filed. And uh, if you happen to be watching Tiger TV, uh, what you're going to see is this one uh, filing uh, that um, a company uh, sold all their shares except 39,000, they sold 8.2 million shares in the filing, and what that actually is, is uh, the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia sold all their Tesla shares, uh, excluding 39,000 as of December 31st, and if you go back, I'm sure they did great, because you go back to December 31st, Tesla was trading anywhere from, well, let's see, if I do the whole quarter, so September, October, November, December, January. So it's November, December, January. So you got between 314 and 424. Now, yes, granted you're at uh, 740, but guess what? You could be at 314 tomorrow. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow, Dow Industrial's up uh, 452. NASDAQ up 48. S&P's up 32. We'll come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks. 
gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 476. Nasdaq's up 52. S&Ps are up 34. Let's go inside the NDX 100. Take a look at the strength versus the weakness. Strength out here is that you got Biogen. Uh, this is quite a move on Biogen. Biogen's up $50.69, trading trade 333. Uh, you got microchip technology up 6%, uh, $6.00. You got uh, Seattle Genetics up uh, another 5.5%. Uh, you get um, Surin Corporation up 54 So let's go to Biogen for a second and take a look at what's happening with Biogen. Uh, Biogen, the low for the year is 215. The high out here today, this has been a heck of a day for Biogen. Uh, it's up $49, but that is $50 off its highs. Uh, this this number here, folks. This is the this is the type of market that we are in, and it's uh, individual stocks are definitely bubblicious. And what does that mean, folks? That means that uh, you know we, when you get these equities that can go up this kind of dollars, which we've seen before, uh, and then give it up in spades simultaneously, that is predicting that the volatility is going to go up in this market tremendously. If we take a look at Biogen. We went from 279 to 374 intraday, intraday, okay? Uh, bottom line, then it gave it back in spades. I believe this is about an Alzheimer's drug, I think. Um, okay, so let's see what it says. Okay, so Biogen's rally of more than 30% Wednesday after it won a key patent dispute. Uh, has some investors celebrating as they put last year's concerns surrounding the failed Alzheimer's drug study in the rearview mirror. The stock, which reached 375, is now higher than it was before. It lost a quarter of its market value in March. Um, let's see what they're saying. I uh, uh, hope. Okay, so it's now the top performing large cap health stock in 2019. That being said, uh, the last time that they, they did this, what ha happened here is that their experimental drug, bottom line, first didn't work. Then they came back into it and they says, okay, we think that we can get this to work now. Um, and we'll, we'll see where this uh, shakes out. Uh, so the bottom line is that uh, they claim that the, the key catalyst for investors is whether or not the U.S. regulators will accept the filing for the Alzheimer's drug. Uh, and if it will get priority review status. Now, this is, you got to remember something. That this is the same drug. If we take a look at this 
chart, what you're going to see, look at this. Yeah, it's the same. So this stock, all-time high, 442. Your bottom of consolidation is 205. You almost got up to the high, last swing high of 388. We hit 374 today uh, and just gave it up. Volatility, man, it's, it's pretty amazing. It really is. So let's go back to the NDX again and see what the laggards are. The laggard, one, the big one out here today, of course, is Tesla, which has been up uh, 18 to 20 percent the last two days. Now it's down 16 percent. Take Two Interactive is off 4.8 percent. You got Mercado Libre down to 4.8, and you got Clack down 4.4. Now the danger for the market in general right now uh, is that uh, let's go over to is that the chip stocks are basically lower. Uh, the chips folks take the NDX 100 up, which takes the composite up, which takes the S&Ps up. And as they start selling off, guess what? They're vicious, just they're going down the other way. And the bottom line is that what you can see here, if I, I have clack, you can see the huge expansion of volume. They're unloading this thing left and right. It's down $7.80, doing 2.3 million shares. Yesterday, you bounced higher with 1.7. LRCX. Let's go take a look at a few others. We'll take a look at Lamb Research. Lamb, higher high. You're up uh, 28 cents, 325. AMAT. We take a look at AMAT. AMAT, shooting for its highs. Uh, big contraction in volume as, as you're going up to it. You're going up to the uh, 8 million. You're at 5.6. That doesn't look like it's going to do it. Uh, XLNX, Xilinx, I think this has been a weaker one in general. Yeah, so Xilinx has already got smoked. Xilinx, is, just in the last two weeks, is down from 103 to 88. These are different programmable chips. Let me pull this back and see what's wrong with this thing. Yeah, so that's way off its highs. That's off the high of 141. You're at 88. That being said, though, guess what? You're just coming right back into where the strength was. Uh, 82.56 is actually where the strength where this popped top side in January of this year. So Disney, Disney come out with its numbers, uh, decent numbers on Disney. Uh, what you have with Disney, you're down 299, but guess what? The, the way, the, the, see, this is one of these classics that you got to a higher high than the last four days. You did 23 million shares. So the spread on Disney today is pretty dramatic. You're talking uh, 11 points, not nine points. That being said, you rejected 138. And it didn't even get close to its swing low. And then the strength that Disney had in November, that's when it basically turned around and said that they're going to be streaming, is pretty extensive. So um, the way that this is working out is that Disney, again, to me, would want to test the 147 area. And right now you're at 141. When you get the thing about numbers is this. What's really cool is that when you come out with your numbers and you have a price spread that's happening out here, and you didn't break your swing low, and you got over the high, the prior high, it's a setup that, guess what? There's buyers out there, and it looks like they want to go higher. Uh, we just hit uh, uh, up 500 in the Dow, and what we're going to see out here, the numbers, because, because the numbers that we're dealing with inside the indices, folks, are so large, you know, you're going to be up 500 or down 500 when that is, is right now that's a 1.7 percent move but you got to remember we're dealing with large numbers right now so it's, there's no doubt I, I guarantee you uh, across the headlines of um, you know major news outlets tonight will be that the Dow Industrials is up 500 dollars because it sounds like a monster well it is a monster that, that's the that's the other side of it uh, big number and, and as a couple of our tigers and tigresses were saying inside the den you couldn't get anyone to buy the Dow Industrials at 28,169. And guess what? You are at 1,200 points higher, and they want to buy it hand over fist. Markets are markets, man. Ford, Ford Motor Company came out. They, they're taking a hit out here. They lost $1.5 billion. It's down 86 cents. The low for the year is $8.16. The high is 10.56. And what you have here, I get a feel this broke the consolidation. Yeah, you get a problem. You get an ABC structure on the way down, actually. So let's take a look at this. What do we have? So, yeah, A points to 10.56. Okay, so you got a $2 A to B. 7.50. 7.50 is the A to B equals C to D, and your swing low out here from December of 2018 is 7.41. So your probability 
uh, gets much higher that that's exactly where we're going is the 741 and Ford hasn't been able to get out of its way and we'll see uh, if you break that 741 and then guess what you're, you're down into uh, the 2008 uh, areas which is saying that with uh, Ford you can get uh, you can get into uh, the price point of uh, five dollars and seventy seven cents it's pretty intense man you know GM let's go take a look at GM in fact, yeah, I gotta go back to Ford for a second. This must drive Ford crazy. So Ford has a market cap of 32 billion, and Tesla has a market cap of 132 billion. <laughs> this is sick. And and Tesla has revenue of 32 billion, and Ford has revenue of come on. 142 billion. Sick. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS profile scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN has developed a daily programming lineup for traders by traders. We start every trading day live at 8.30 a.m. with Tommy O'Brien hosting the morning market kickoff as he starts the day off by breaking down everything you need to know about what's going on for the trading day ahead. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento takes your calls and questions live on the air for the opening bell as he hosts Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the Bull Bear Trading Hour. At 11 a.m., it's Kevin Hanks and Alex Coffey from TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market, Basil Chapman at noon with the Tiger Technicians Hour, Steve Rhodes hosts the Trader's Edge at 1 p.m., Dave White with the Power Trading Hour at 2 p.m., and Tom O'Brien closes out the day for the final hour of trading live from 3 till 4. Don't miss a second of our daily programming lineup. Tune in to Tiger TV every trading day live at TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow up uh, 488. NASDAQ up 44. SPs are up 33. And we get, uh, let's go say, uh, so here we go. Let's do a little update on the, this uh, virus. So you get the World Health Organization. First off, this morning we were kicking off, folks. Uh, bottom line is that you had rumors overnight that the, uh, they were making a breakthrough with the uh, vaccine development for the coronavirus. Well, the World Health Organization is pushing back on this saying, hey, guess what? It's not even close, okay? Uh, bottom line is that what they have done well, well you so i'm switching here from the world health organization they're saying that there is not a breakthrough in vaccines and our treatments uh, 
the U.S. health officials, as CDC, uh, has just uh, confirmed a 12th case in Wisconsin. Uh, and what they are doing, which is pretty cool, uh, is that they are sending, right now, the, you'd have to send the, the if you, to see whether you have uh, this coronavirus down to Atlanta, and that's changing. They're sending out a huge amount of test kits. Uh, each one of these test kits, uh, right across the country right now, uh, each one of these test kits, uh, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention started shipping new test kits that, that can detect the coronavirus on site to 200 laboratories in the U.S. and 200 others outside of the country. Each test kit uh, can process seven to eight hundred samples, and what that does, folks, that allows more than a quarter million people, number one, to get their results ASAP, and of course, the reason f that you need something like that is you don't want all these people simultaneously going to the hospital to overwhelm the system. If you've never seen um, the aspect of uh, what flu alone can do to a hospital waiting room, you know, I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it right here in Florida. Uh, it's pretty intense when everyone comes at the same time, particularly if people are coming and they really don't have the flu or don't have a cold and all of that. So that's why the test kits are really important, um, that people can get comfortable in the aspect, do you have it, don't you have it, then you have it, great, go, go to the hospital. Um, uh, what, we, what you also have here, today's the day, uh, yeah, the fifth. So today's the day that the, you had Delta Airlines, United Airlines, this is the last day that they're flying out of uh, China in general for almost a couple months. Uh, they, they went until the February 5th time frame to get customers that basically wanted to get back home or that they had got over there back in. Uh, what we are going to be seeing, this is where this gets pretty wild, uh, is that you have um, the, we have flights that are coming in, and let me see where they're landing, because people are going to want to know. So you're landing in Texas. Now, this, is, this is a different, this is bringing Americans right out of the center of this disaster, and I suspect that they're going to put them in quarantine for a bit, but they're landing, I think, in Texas, where it says it. You get Texas, Nebraska, and one other state. Um, uh, Cathay Pacific is looking for folks to take unpaid leave. This is, this is pretty intense, man. This is going to hurt people, uh, right, you know, it, it is what it is. They're looking uh, to uh, asking their staff to take unpaid leave March, April, May, and June. So this is pretty intense. Cathay Pacific, uh, they're shutting down quite a bit, man. And... That's a, that's a big number over there. That, that's out to June 30th now. That's, that is a big number. You get Airbus is shutting its plant in China. They don't, they're not saying when that's going to open back up, but 10% of the company's um, output comes out of that one plant. So that's, that's pretty big. Um, let's see. Hong Kong. Oh, this is the, the cruise passengers. They're, they're, I'd say they're in the... You get 7,000 cruise passengers right now that are, that are quarantined. Uh, that, that is no doubt a, a monster number. You get Credit Suisse, they're scrapping their conference in uh, Hong Kong. No one's going to go to Hong Kong either. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Disney, Disney closed Shanghai. That's, that's not killing Disney, uh, and it won't kill Disney. Right now, you're up to 24,000 cases, and right now they're saying out of the 24,000 cases, um, you do have approximately over 3,000 that, that are severe. So we'll see where this uh, whole thing's going to go. But uh, bottom line is that you can't expect it to go away quickly. That's, that's how this is uh, shaking out. The, the heaviest part of uh, this whole deal, no doubt, is that uh, this is the first time, folks, that you had a uh, quarantine with anywhere in the world with this many people. You know, so you can imagine that if you're in... Uh, Wuhan, uh, which is 11 million people, you know, over the course of time, um, there's going to be some heavy tension. You know, what, what tends to happen, folks, in any type of disaster, uh, and I'm, I'm, I've been in a couple of really good hurricanes, uh, Katrina I was in, what happens is that people's nerves get frayed after five or six days. You know, that's what I really, and, that, and that's not even saying, you know, you made it through Katrina, so there wasn't like, really any dire circumstances after that case. You know, it was the first two or three days that people 
passed away, real problems and all that, then it just everyone gets itchy. This particular one, I can't even imagine because it's totally different because you're actually trapped in a city. You're trapped in a city that has a virus going around. Um, and it's like, okay, so who are you talking to, who are you walking with, who are you doing everything with, and where, are you, where is your food coming from, particularly, you know, uh, that the food is no doubt a monster deal about where you're getting it, where did it come from, and all the rest, so. Market-wise out here, uh, let's go to the small caps. Even the small caps are catching a bit out here today. You get the small caps up $2.50, the Russell 2000, trading 167. Now, that being said, the small caps are still the super laggard inside of the market in general. They, they, the small caps topped out in July, in August of 2018. Let me bring the actual, that was, I'm going to bring up the actual indice, because the more I keep looking at this, it's like the way this market's going, man, I wouldn't doubt it that the market's waiting for the small caps to basically hit its high, you know, because we're, we're really right next to it right now. Uh, the Russell 2000 got up to 1715 last month. The high is 1740. You know, right now we're at 7, 1682. You know, so we'll see whether it can handle it. Uh, but bottom line is that many times, most, many times, what normally happens is that you have major indices basically hit highs. All of them normally hit highs, okay? In this particular case, different ball game. We go to the transports. We take a look at the transports out here. Transports right now, they're trading at 10,942. And, uh, you know, that all-time high is 11623 Now, the transports in general, folks, this is operating pretty cool, meaning it's up at highs for the fundamental news that is out there, you know, because the bottom line is that we just went through the aspect of um, how many things are shut down in China. Um, you know, these, these transports basically, uh, like today, you only have one transport that is in the red, and that's JetBlue. JetBlue is putting five negative points into it. Um, you know, other than that, uh, bottom line is that whether it's shipping companies, airlines, UPS, FedEx, uh, bottom line is that uh, they are in the green and they're buying it, you know. Uh, what, we, what we will get, now this is going to get kind of cool, uh, and the next, we, these just start dribbling out. I went through the Tesla sell, Saudi Arabia sold almost all their shares in Tesla at the last quarter. We're going to be getting these 13F filings, and we'll see where these big funds are positioned. Dow, Dow's up 466, Nasdaq's up 39, S&P's up 32. We're coming right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. 
See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over to Macy's. So uh, Macy's, folks, the uh, low for the year is $14. The high is $26. It's up $0.96 cents right now. Uh, this uh, company, uh, no doubt, has been having a hard time for a long period of time. And if we take a look at this, let's see. Does it tell us? It doesn't tell us how many stores they have right now. Uh, no, here we go. So they operate, you know, before this announcement this morning, they operated 870 stores across 45 states. And this morning they came out, they're going to close 125 department stores on 9% of their workforce. Macy's going to close uh, 125 of the least productive department stores, almost a quarter of the total over the next three years, cutting 2,000 jobs. Uh, the stores include 30 that are already in the process of being closed. Okay, that's not that. Uh, uh, that account for $1.4 billion in sales. Um, and their stores, by the way, are, are very large. There's no two ways about that. If we, if we take a look at the setup here and we bring this back a bit, what you're going to see is that this has been on a one-way route since 2015, $73. Um, you get another dead cat bounce here. We'll see whether we can get any juice, but... Uh, it looks to me like this is still a shooting for the uh, $12.40 area. We got down to, uh, well, we got down to $14. It's, it certainly is not getting enough juice uh, or buy-in even on this announcement. If we take a look at the uh, revenue uh, on a fundamental basis, what they're looking at is this, is that in 2016, they took in $27.1 billion, 2020, 24.6. So you're contracting, and they're contracting at about 3% a year. That's how this is shaken out. Um, they are looking and they're claiming that they're still going to make money. So that's, that's pretty cool because if they can uh, cut more, basically, real estate, it will make a difference. The, the problem with a big box store like a Macy's is that even when they're cutting the real estate, Many times that the lease structure there, they can't cut right away. Uh, in this particular case, you can see how many employees they're cutting. That is a cut immediately to the bottom line, no doubt about that. Uh, but the structure in the leasing uh, is going to take some hard negotiations in order to basically get out of all those stores without paying a big vig. What most times what ends up happening, what the large landlords are going to want is that, uh, let's say you get uh, 20 more years left on the lease, um, what ends up happening on the landlord's basis, right, is that the landlord has already given that lease to either a bank, a fund, or someone else on that cash flow. So it's not like the landlord can turn around and even say that, okay, I'll cut this because all of a sudden under the loan covenants of the landlord, then they're in trouble. So that's why the negotiations um, will take a bit. There's no, there's no two ways about that. So we'll see if, uh, they, if they can do it. Um, you know, thus far, I think they're, well, the space is 
large. That's the real bottom line. If they can cut the space very quickly, it's going to make a difference because they, they have great products. There's no doubt about that. The real question is, uh, are we ever going to go back to malls like we used to go back to malls? I don't think so. Um, I just don't, don't see it. And what does tend to happen is that whether you're using Amazon going somewhere, there's no doubt that the online presence, uh, if they can get that uh, under, they, they'd have a shot. But what does happen now is that, so picture something which is really wild, is that you can be a Macy's, one of the, the I'd say the premier, premier shopping you know, stores around, right? And things have changed so dramatically in the last 20 years that let's say that you are just selling whatever it is. I don't care whether it's a top, a bottom, a shoes, whatever, whatever you have. Then you have a competitor. And that competitor can sell the exact same thing because Macy's doesn't have anything special meaning their own brand versus, uh, you know, they're just a middleman. So what ends up happening is that even online, the bottom line is that now you're going to compete with the aspect of specialty companies and specialty stores. That's why you see the aspect of, like if we go over to Procter & Gamble for a second. So watch this, PG, PG, right? This is pretty cool watching this. So if we look at Procter & Gamble, lows 96, the highs 127, right? We're at the highs right now. Well, what Procter & Gamble <laughs> does and continues to do is that each and every time that, you know, and they, of course, they sell everything, folks, okay? When you, when you take a look at it, I mean, there's almost nothing that they don't sell, meaning you go from Gillette, Crest, Tide, uh, Old Spice, Pepto-Bismol, Pepto right? Uh, you know, Pampers, the whole ball of wax. But what they have done, and they've been very good at it since the internet got so big, every, it seems like every company that singularly has taken on the establishment inside the brand, Procter & Gamble ends up going after, buying, and not changing the structure. What ends up happening is that those Individual brands are advertising more on the radio, but guess what? They fold that into their product line. And, you know, they, they'll have something that's very inexpensive that's destroying something's more expensive, but you can see from the chart and you can see, watch this, we'll pull it up, from their revenue that it's working, you know. 2016 did 65 billion, 2020, 70 billion. You know, and the, the bottom line is that it's split down fabric and home care is 22 billion, babies 17 billion, beauty 12 billion, healthcare 8 billion, and grooming 6 billion. Um, out of all of those, the only one that is contracting a bit is that you get groomings contracting by 3%, babies contracting by 1, beauty's going up by 4, healthcare is going up by 3.7 and uh, home care is going up 2.1. Uh, so the, the differential there, if they just held all the brands that they had as those brands basically get whacked by the new uh, brands on the street, uh, they, they would basically, all, maybe wouldn't look like Macy's, but they wouldn't be looking at all-time highs. There's no two ways about that. And that's exactly where they are. And my take is that the reason that they're there is they keep buying them and, you know, the bottom line, then they, then they grow them. <clears throat> because you, you, we, there's some real destruction going on uh, with single brands uh, that are very good, by the way, and uh, taking on these much larger brands. Gold. Let's go over to the gold contract out here. So what we have with gold is this. Gold came down hard yesterday. We went lower today. You rejected lower price out here today. You got underneath the lows of yesterday. That is saying that now gold wants to go to the top of the consolidation once again. This is a classic. Gold came right into its strength from January 3rd. Didn't hit its lowest swing point, which is positive and bullish in a big way. The lowest swing point is 1542. We hit 1551. We've only done 294,000 contracts. That's small contract volume, what you're going into. 
That's the same, same. We're going to go top side once again. It's going to get pretty intriguing here because now what we're dealing with is that, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're going to deal with Thursday, Friday. Uh, you're going to be dealing with numbers that are coming out. Um, earnings are coming out. Coronavirus numbers are coming out. Going into the weekend, volatility uh, is here in spades. Dow. Dow's up 441. Nasdaq's up 31. S&P's are up 30. We'll come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Basil Chapman will be hosting a 90-minute live webinar for subscribers to his daily trading service, The Opening Call, Thursday, February 13th from 4 till 5.30 p.m. Basil will host his live webinar titled The Dark Cloud Cover, an Essential Market Analysis. In this 90-minute webinar, Basil will discuss the techniques he uses when identifying market downturns using his Chapman Wave, including how he uses specific ETFs like the SMH Semiconductor ETF as a canary in the coal mine leading indicator when looking for market downturns. By identifying particular weaknesses in the market technicals, Basil is able to identify the severity of the market reaction, and this is just one of many topics he'll be covering. To sign up now for the opening call, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't miss out on this special 90-minute live webinar with Basil Chapman, Thursday, February 13th. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow up 429. NASDAQ is up uh, 25. S&Ps are up uh, 28. We get over and take a look at the uh, S&Ps first. Uh, the SPY, what you have with the SPY out here, folks, is it's done 50 million shares. The high is uh, 332.95. And we hit that high. We hit 333.09. Uh, we'll see where this uh, baby uh, closes out. You know, right at this particular point, uh, the bottom line is that, uh, yeah, you're a little bit uh, lower than that, than, uh, that last high. And, uh, you know, bottom line is that we'll see if that's going to be a failure on price. Uh, at this particular point, uh, it is. Uh, we'll see how that works out overnight. NDX 100 is a different ball game. NDX 100, that had already broken topside. That's still topside. It's up 51 points. Yeah, I gave it up a little. It was a week out here today compared to the uh, other indices, but the, that is because it's so far, so much of a leader. That's, that's, that's what it seems like. Dow Industrials, the Dow is reaching for this high out here. Uh, the Dow Industrials uh, got up... Uh, 
we got as high as uh, 29,308. That's about 80 points higher than we were, uh, 60 points higher than we are right now. Uh, that high that it was reaching for is 29,373. Uh, so we missed that by approximately uh, 70 points, uh, 65 to be exact. Uh, the volume characteristic, let's go see what we're going to see in the volume in the NY, well, first in the, inside the NYSE. Inside the NYSE, we are going to be running, right now we have uh, 680. That's going to be pretty good. They'll throw, there's only five minutes left, but they'll, th they'll throw 400 million on there. So that's going to be a billion shares. Now, that being said, you're going into one, uh, well, you went downtown with 1.3 billion. Inside the NASDAQ composite, we take a look at the composite, we're at 2.1. That composite right now, that'll do about 2.4. So that, that's going to be a toss-up. Uh, on the volumes as you're reaching into these higher numbers. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Everything you need is right inside you. You might as well have a blast with it, folks. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. What are you doing right now? Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Come join us. 8.30 tomorrow morning. Go get them, folks.